22 this morning, the father of a local Navy sailor killed one week ago in that Pensacola Naval Air Station shooting says his son died following in his footsteps. Well, now he's struggling, as you can imagine, to stay strong for his family as they get ready to say goodbye the week before Christmas. This is his favorite time of year, too. Cameron loves Christmas. Shane Walters couldn't wait to see his son Cameron this Christmas. It would have been his first trip home since joining the Navy in September. He just really had a, he had a sense of purpose that I'd never seen in him before. You know, he was a man, a sailor. Instead, Cameron's coming home the week before Christmas, but his family's planning his funeral instead of dinner. You see, Cameron's one of those three sailors killed during a shooting rampage at Pensacola's Naval Air Station last Friday. Walters used to look at pictures to remember his own days in the Navy, was proud Cameron decided to follow in his footsteps, but now every picture's a reminder of a future cut short. Cameron had a heart of gold. Just a pile of snapshots, he says, proves if Cameron had lived longer, he might have changed the world with this wide smile and huge heart. He would take wrenches out of my hand when I'm working on cars and say, I got this, Daddy. Now Walters clings to his last conversation with Cameron the night before he died, relives the terror of last Friday morning when he first heard about that Pensacola shooting and the anguish he felt all day. Father said instincts. And so I called him with no answer. I texted him with no answer. I texted him over and over and over and over again. He officially learned his son had been killed when a chaplain showed up at his house that night. And while he's proud of his son's service. He died a hero, that he died doing what he said he would do for the United States of America. Right now, that word hero does little to heal the hole in his heart. For now, what we owe Cameron is to put him to rest as quickly as possible. And we have a very beautiful spot here in Richmond Hill picked out for him. But in the days to come, we're going to need to understand. Well, Walter says his heart also goes out to the families of the other two soldiers also killed in that Pensacola shooting. And Walter's family says his body, by the way, uh, Cameron's, will arrive home tomorrow at the Savannah Hilton Head International Airport. Richmond Hill leaders asking people to line that route from the airport along Highway 17 onto Ford Avenue in Richmond Hill, the funeral home there on Ford Avenue. They plan a celebration of life for him Monday at Compassion Church's uh, campus on Al Henderson Boulevard in Savannah. They do say, though, that friends who want to pay their respects can come to the church an hour early to do that. Now, we also talked to Cameron's siblings. They call him the glue that kept them close. Our Chris Tatum shares their story of family and forgiveness. Just try not to cry. Ask Evan Gay about his big brother Cameron, and you'll get a full spectrum of emotion right now. Laughter for his lifetime of memories. Sadness Cameron's gone. Anger at how. 21-year-old Cameron Walters died last week when a killer opened fire at Pensacola, Florida's Naval Air Station. Gay remembers how Cameron ended up joining the Navy. A recruiter came to talk to me, and, and then Cameron ended up talking to him. Yep, the recruiter who came to talk to Gay snagged his big brother instead. And I was actually planning on being a Navy SEAL, and I still kind of am, and this whole thing made me want to do it more, but... Younger brother Mason also has Navy aspirations. They're on hold for now. Obviously, my parents can't. They can't see what happened and just feel comfortable about us going in. Right now, they're just trying to carry each other through their darkest hour to be the brother to each other they say Cameron was to both of them. He was always the one to make people start laughing. Like, he was, if anything ever got awkward, he'd be the first one to crack a joke and just make everybody smile and... I try to remember and keep in mind all the good times we had, pictures and music we listened to. If, if anything would ever happen to me, that he'd be right there with me. Their sister Darian loved for Cameron to drive her to school. We always sing and dance together on the way. As heavy as their hearts are right now, they are proud Cameron died a hero, 
saving other lives at the risk of his own. He was a hero before he died. And as angry as they are at the man who pulled the trigger, they can't help but think of what Cameron might say about it. If Cameron could come back and he met that dude, he would probably, be, he'd, he would forgive him, he'd forgive the dude. Everybody knows him, everybody loves him. You might call this group Boyd's Buddies. They've been looking out for their friend Boyd Holt for weeks. Checking his mail, taking his trash out, taking care of his cats. Especially the past two weeks since he tested positive for COVID-19. He's so weak that he couldn't open a can of soda. Holt owns this salon on Savannah's Forest Park Drive. Denise Labonte recalls it was among the city's first businesses to shut down when coronavirus came to town. He certainly wasn't going to be a part of putting anybody at risk. Now Holt's biting the bullet from both ends of the COVID-19 pandemic. The virus itself. He was coughing so bad that he couldn't keep anything down. And the financial pinch it put him and his business in. He finally went to the hospital Tuesday, went reluctantly. You see, weeks without work has drained his bank account and he lost his health insurance when he could no longer afford to pay for it. When he, he texted me, he put, um, oh, oh my God, and then he put dollar signs. Like, this is gonna cost me what I don't have. But turns out Holt has another, even better insurance policy than he realized called friendship. Yet these same buddies who cared for him as he tried to fight coronavirus on his own are now introducing him to even more friends through GoFundMe. They've already raised nearly $7,000 to help cover his hospital cost. They hope to raise enough to help him get back to business when this pandemic's over. Rent, insurance, utilities, uh phone, everything is tied to this business. They admit Boyd Holt's a proud man who wouldn't want charity, but as Denise Labonte sees it, he's been such a good friend to them. He's just a beautiful soul. They're just paying him back with a currency of kindness. In Savannah, Chris Tatum, WJCL 22 News. When it comes to transgender people serving in the military, Carla Moore has two perspectives. A woman's. If you can do the job, it shouldn't matter what your gender is. And a man's. Let God sort them out. Carl Moore served 10 years in the Army, seven of them as an airborne infantryman. Even before the Army, he felt different, hoped to one day become a woman, but knew all too well what the Army would do if it ever found out. The Army at the time would have uh let me go with a less than honorable discharge. In 2016, former President Trump signed an executive order restricting most transgender people from military service. But Monday, President Biden lifted those restrictions, now letting all transgender people serve in all branches of the military, openly, honestly, honorably. Dusty Church is Savannah's LGBT Center's board chairman. He calls President Biden's executive order a huge victory, not just for transgender people, but for America. And for uh, folks in our community who want to serve, who are willing to take the make the ultimate sacrifice and give their life and service to this country, it is a wonderful thing to now be included. Carla Moore's just glad transgender people can finally, truly experience what it means to live in the land of the free. We're a small segment of the population, but we're just as proud of our country as any other American. In Savannah, Chris Tatum, WJCL 22 News.